itself, what this nation is doing to itself right now. There's no one who can disagree with me. No one. If they do, they're mentally insane. When you see article after article telling people who are white to be ashamed of their race, by people who claim not to be racist, if that's not insanity, tell me what is. When you see radical, sick feminists attacking boys and saying large muscles is a sign of aggression, tell me if that's not mental illness. Tell me what is going to be required to save this nation from its own self-destruction. This is a nation that is in the deep throes of an illness. It would be too easy to call it a mental illness, which I've done in, in 2005 or six with liberalism as a mental disorder. I have, I've redefined the illness America is suffering from as an autoimmune disease. America is suffering the equivalent of political AIDS. It is an autoimmune disease where a retrovirus has invaded the country and has encrypted itself into the DNA of the nation, has replicated itself, and is destroying the nation from within. They're called the Democrat Socialist Party. That is the virus that has invaded this country, that is destroying the nation from within. Now, if you want more of it, go vote for uh, the uh, grandma. Go vote for grandma if that's what you want. That's what you're going to get. If you think Biden is the savior, you're sicker than you think you are. You ought to see your psychiatrist. Biden's speech the other day is about homophobia at a time when ISIS is throwing gays off a roof, raping its way across the Middle East, occupying an area larger than Great Britain. That's all this doofus can think of is homophobia, a speech from, from 1959 in some obscure boys club. What, is he crazy? That's going to be your savior from Hillary Clinton? I had a little thought about Biden, by the way. You know that he's unelectable. And you know that in your heart of hearts, the only reason that they're warming him up in the bullpen is not for the election. And I can't finish this without risking a great deal. But I had a shocking thought. It's the rogue president has broken free of his handlers. As far as I can go with that. The rogue president has gone so far to the left and so off the reservation that they're warming up Biden in the bullpen. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. All right, so we're talking about survival of the fittest, and I made my point from a planter box on the side of my house, how a weak plant is overrun by a strong invading plant. It's straight out, uh, straight out biology. I mean, you learn that in the fifth grade. Just plant whatever you want and watch the weeds take over the garden unless you weed the garden. So now we have a government that is inviting the weeds and stamping out not the vintage crop, not stamping out the vintage crop, uprooting the vintage crop of America itself, tearing it out by the roots and throwing it into the garbage heap, not even into the compost heap. Obama is such a mad gardener, to use a very poor analogy, that he's ripping out the native stock as rapidly as he can and replacing with invading species. I realize that this is harsh rhetoric. I realize it offends the sensibilities of the refined types in America who don't want to think of such things. But I can't help it because that's the way I see things. That's how I see things from the point of view of a, a biologist <clears throat> and point of view of, let's say, a political observer. England has just said no to the EU demands that they take in hundreds of thousands of more Young Muslim refugees. Why are so many men being brought in to the European nations? And who are the quislings in the EU who want to flood Europe with young Muslim men? Why are they bringing the armies in? They think they'll spare them at the end? Well, you see, the madness of liberalism has almost no bounds. It's a suicidal cult. At the end of the day, liberalism itself is a religion, and it's a suicidal religion. Everywhere you turn, Jerry Brown signing a euthanasia bill and acting as though it's something wholesome and good for the people. We know what it is. It's a death cult. Jerry Brown is leading a death cult here in the state of California. And, and typically, typically, progressives always hold up their madness as something progressive. And what do we the people do as we watch this going on? In the past, you can sort of ignore it. But now when you see the waves upon waves upon waves of mostly young virile men coming into Europe 
And now you see a president trying to do the same thing to America, and there's nobody stopping him. You have a bunch of old, weak, corrupt drunks on the Republican side. Who's going to stop him? So he figures, why not do what I want to do? That's why that weekend he went from, we'll bring in 10,000 Syrians. Saturday morning it was 100,000. Sunday morning it was 200,000. The man was almost giddy. He was running it up the flagpole, as they used to say many years ago, to see what would happen. And guess what? There was no opposition. The drunk didn't even hear it. He was on a beach chair in, in Jacksonville. The gobbler didn't hear it. He was busy raising his turkey somewhere in Kentucky. So where is the opposition? Ah, the people, they don't matter. We have no power. When did the people ever have power in a nation? Tell me when the people of a nation ever had power. Stop living in the fantasy world of the colonies. You know what I don't understand is how people can compare a colonial system of the, of the 1700s to today. It's a different universe. Maybe the same principles apply, but the same issues of governance don't apply. It just doesn't work when you have a multi-ethnic society at this point in history and a society of this size in history. So stop hearkening back to Ben Franklin with the key already and the, and the, the lightning storm. We're not in the fifth grade. Those nonsensical comparisons don't work. They're academic. So let's get down to brass tacks. What are we going to do about it? Survival of the fittest. You know, there was a time in England when they had a quizzling leader who went to your, uh, to, uh, right after Germany invaded. I think it was Poland. And he came back and he said, I have in my hand the Anglo-German Naval agreement, and these countries shall never go to war again. Hip, hip, hooray! The next day, Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia. The day after that, they threw him out. His own party voted to throw him out of, out of uh, business. They got rid of him because they realized he was a suicidal laborite who was going to destroy England. They needed a war leader. Remember the Godfather movie? Tom, you're out. You're not a wartime consigliore. Do you people not understand that sometimes art imitates life and it teaches us lessons? Tom Hagen, what did I do wrong, Mike? Sorry, Tom, you're out. You're not a wartime consigliore. It's the same thing in America. He wasn't in England that time. Neville Chamberlain was not a wartime consigliore. Russia, Germany was on the move. Hitler was invading. Hitler had built up his military, even though they said you couldn't. Uh, and this, this weakling, this good-natured weakling, the pacifist, socialist, intellectual, came back with an agreement that he couldn't wipe his nose with, as far as uh, Hitler was concerned. And so his own party moved to get rid of him. They got rid of him, they threw him out. They voted him out. That's the benefit of a parliamentary system. We don't have such a system here. But something went off in me this morning as I was walking and looking at the birds diving for their daily bread and thinking about the plants in my planter box. Something in me said that Somewhere deep within the controlling elements of this government, those who actually run things, and God only knows who they are. I can probably give you a short list of those who I think are really running the thing. I'm not sure who they are, but even they at a certain point recognize that a nation can be destroyed from within. And they've gone too far by putting this maniac in the White House. And the maniac is now so broken free of their controls just as others have done in history who were first put in power by more powerful people and then they went rogue on them. It happened, by the way, in Germany. It's not a direct comparison. But if you remember the history of Hitler, if you read him at all, he didn't come to power on his own or in a vacuum. Very powerful industrialists backed him in the beginning. The Krupps, for example, who had been bankrupted after World War I. They were the main, main um, armaments manufacturer. They backed Hitler because they knew he'd be good for business. Eisenhower said, beware the government, uh, military industrial complex, right? So you have the same elements here in America. There are certain people who wanted Obama. They figured they could always control him. And now he's gotten so crazy, he's gone off the reservation. Now, there's a paragraph or two that should be inserted here, but I can't do it. So I'll now jump to paragraph four in this thought process. And Joe Biden's being warmed up in the bullpen. Now I'll go to paragraph seven. I'll skip another paragraph. Uh, and it's not for the election in 2016. Now the question is, can his own party remove him now that he's gone rogue? Because he's going crazier by the day. He's gone way beyond anything he ever hoped he would ever achieve. Everyone has a list of dreams they have. This guy has so gone beyond everything he ever thought he could get away with 
that he's continuing down the path of such national destruction that it's, that it's now bordering on national suicide, that even his own party sees that, probably within the Hillary camp. Because as much as I detest most of her policies, I've got to tell you something. She is actually more of a centrist than Obama is. Don't get me wrong, I'm not supporting her. I would never vote for her. Any Republican would be better than Hillary Clinton, except Rubio. I put an X through him. I would not vote for him. He's nothing but a shill. He's a shill for Larry Ellison and Silicon Valley. He's in favor of massive influx of the massive influx of immigrants without any controls. And Rubio is a disaster, a walking and, and total talking disaster. Other than him, any Republican would be better. But I'm not saying I'm supporting Hillary Clinton. Of course, you can jump to that if you want. It doesn't matter to me what you want to jump to. But I think even within the Hillary camp, there are rational billionaires who recognize that the nation is being destroyed from within. And there's only so far that you can push people until they snap. You get it? And so that's sort of monologue number two of the Savage Nation. Today's show is entitled Survival of the Fist. Really based upon the rhododendron and the weed in my planter box next to my house. Yes, and it's the end of the tomato season. Interestingly enough, on the other side of my house, I have a little tomato garden, again in a large planter area next to a little lawn area. And the tomatoes are planted in March. They usually produce until August. Here we are in October, and there's still a few tomatoes coming up. Must be that pesky global warming, which, of course, teaches you everything you need to know that they don't seem to know, which is that, that without global warming, you'd be eating mud. You'd be licking ice right now. And that global warming has actually been beneficial to humankind. It's permitted agriculture to expand. And frankly, it's permitted the human race to expand. It's actually been very beneficial to global warming. That is the melting of the ice that's been going on for about, at least since the uh, Little Ice Age. It's only 500 years. But Gore didn't read about the Little Ice Age. Long before the first car was ever produced, before the factory started belching smoke in England, the ice had started to retreat in a great natural cycle, which is not to argue for pollution, but it's to argue against insanity and stupidity and the grifters in the fake science world. So now we go to the callers uh, on the Savage Nation on all these topics. I brought up I, five, six different topics. I said something quite uh, controversial that the Democrats may be planning to, let us say, gently move Obama aside and bring in Biden before his term is up. Do you think that's even possible? Is it even possible? I mean, I'm taking, I'm taking a big chance in suggesting it. Is it. Do you think it's totally irrational? It was done through the legislative process in England when Neville Chamberlain was seen as such a dangerous man for the survival of England that his own party got rid of him. So why can't the Democrats move in some way to get rid of this rogue president? Why? Why couldn't they do it? I'm asking a very controversial question. It's an almost off-the-grid question. But, hey, I think that thinking is still legal in America, isn't it? The last I checked, you're allowed to think. I know the thought police are everywhere. But since I don't have one in the studio right now except a sleeping poodle, I'll ask the question. Is that a possibility? Yes or no? No, one's, no one even understands what I just asked because they haven't heard it yet. You see, this is the horrible thing about radio. This is the limitation of being a free thinker. That unless the audience has heard it before and thought about it and chewed on it, and read it on 15 different websites, and then they could spit out what they read. They're not even going to call on a, on a novel question. They don't even know what, you, what you're saying to them. And so it brings us back to the issue of you can only be so far ahead of the pack until the pack doesn't even know what you're talking about. And I hope I haven't reached that point with my audience. The ratings that came in yesterday from TalkStream Live indicate that the show is bigger than ever. A 25.6 share of the audience in talk radio uh, the next in line is Rush with a 13.7 or something share. I don't have the numbers in front of me. And my lead is expanded on devices, means the audience, the younger audience loves me. The younger audience is turning to me. The younger audience wants to hear me. Why? If I'm such a bad guy, if my message is so shocking and abrasive and so out of tune with the realities of today, why are so many people rushing to listen to Michael Savage? Why are they buying my books? Why did they buy Stop the Coming Civil War? Why are they rushing on Amazon and buying Government Zero, sending it off the charts before it even comes out? Why? Because they understand that the message is not so crazy. They also look around. They don't know the country they're living in anymore. 
They don't even hear English being spoken 